Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. We talk about the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. So, my mother-in-law is the sweetest mother-in-law one could ask for. When I first came into the family, she welcomed me with the warmest heart and made sure I'm comfortable. After my engagement, she was the first to call me and congratulate me from my then fiancé's side. Even during our marriage, she actively took part in all the arrangements and helped us out tremendously. There was no judgment in the way that she looked at me or talked to me. I really felt accepted and welcomed into her home. I was visiting her last week before the holidays and she asked me to be her plus one for a wedding. She said she didn't want to go alone, but also that I should only come if I'm comfortable going to a stranger's wedding. Obviously, I said yes, because how can I say no to this sweet lady who has shown me nothing but love? So we went that night to the wedding. As soon as we arrived, my mother-in-law excused herself, saying that she should meet with her friend, groom's mother. I said okay and went around looking for drinks. After a while, I started feeling self-conscious and went to look for a seat in the wedding party. Almost all the guests had arrived at this point and were settling in for the ceremony. As I was trying to decide where I'll sit, I saw my mother-in-law in the crowd. I was confused, as I thought that she was visiting her friend. I assumed that she must have come back here thinking that I'd already be seated. I went and sat beside her. I asked her how her friend was doing. She awkwardly muttered a reply. I found it a little odd, but decided that she must be focused on the ceremony about to start. We sat in silence until the end of it. Once it was over, my mother-in-law got up and went straight to her friend without saying anything to me. At this point, I suspected something was wrong. I didn't know what to do, so I waited a little bit, thinking that she'll come back. When she went ahead with her other acquaintances to find something to eat, I walked up to her. She saw me coming and gave me a polite smile. As I reached her friend circle, she excused herself, saying that she needed to use the restroom and walk past me. Now I'm really confused. Why was she avoiding me? I was sure that her behavior was strange and there's no way it wasn't on purpose. I thought if she's treating me like this, there must be a valid reason behind her. I thought about asking her what's wrong right there, but then shrugged off the idea. If she's doing this, maybe it's wise to wait until we go back and then ask her what her reason is to treat me like a stranger. After her, she loves me completely. She's the woman who's like my real mom and who welcomed me in her family. She plans trips with me and makes sure that we spend time together frequently. If she's behaving this strangely towards me, her reasons must be genuine, and I was sure that once she explains them to me, it will all make sense. After that, I purposely avoided her too and just enjoyed myself among other strange guests. It's not like I was having a bad time. It was an open bar and buffet style service, so I had quite a good time. Once we came back, I asked my mother-in-law why she treated me like a stranger throughout the wedding. She gave me a vague answer about how her friends just took her with them before she could ask me to join and that it was nothing big. Now I was really suspicious, so I know for a fact that I didn't imagine the strangeness of that night. Then, why is she gaslighting me? This person who became a real mom and a good friend to me is gaslighting me into believing I imagined everything that happened. I asked her not to make light of what happened because I really need to understand her reasons for treating me like a stranger. The answer she gave me shocked me to my core. She told me that because of our different societal backgrounds, she had to avoid me. She said it doesn't matter to her that I come from a poor family with not much social standing and that all she cares about is that I'm the person her son fell in love with. She said after meeting me the first time, she knew that my background and my roots did not turn me into a girl who's just after the money and that I'm an independent woman marrying her son because I love him too. But she said she can't explain that to her high society friends and it's easier to not say anything than to explain about me. She said she fully accepts me but also doesn't want to explain to every single one of her friends how different I am. I was so shocked to hear her say these words that I didn't know how to react. How can a person be so two-faced? I didn't say anything to her at that time. I couldn't argue with her or hurt her. I was pissed and heartbroken that she'll be ashamed of me. So I went back to my room and the next morning I left her house. Since then, I haven't talked to her. What do I make of all this? For starters, all the time she cared for me, 
It never once felt pretentious. But if she really wants to accept me within the confines of her home, I don't think I can stand that. I was raised to accept myself and be proud of myself. I came from nothing and built myself a beautiful life. I won't allow anyone to disregard that or disrespect me. Am I an a-hole for walking out on her and not trying to understand her side? Am I overreacting on a trivial matter and letting my ego come in the way of having a good relationship with my mother-in-law? Thanks everyone for all the replies. Since so many of you wanted to know how our situation is now and how I went about tackling it, I thought I'll write an update instead of replying to every PM. Since I knew that she genuinely didn't want to hurt me, and in her own twisted way, she thought that treating me like a stranger in front of her friends is not something so big that I'll feel hurt or disrespected, I decided to talk it out and let her know about my point of view and where I'm coming from. Since the holidays have started, my husband and I decided to spend it at her place and we stay there for a week. Things were surely a little awkward between us as she wasn't sure if I'm still mad at her. I finally managed to get her on her own after my husband went to bed and told her that what she did made me feel like I'm not good enough to belong in her world. I came from a family that was barely managing to survive on weekly paychecks and moved around quite a lot. Even after hopping all over the country and having an unstable lifestyle, I was able to get my degree and build a career for me. I was proud of the woman I've become, especially after I found her son and married him. I finally found stability and a sense of belonging to a place, but when she so blatantly ignored me and treated me like a stranger, it brought up all my past memories of not being able to fit in, and that made me angry because I worked my ass off to reach this point. It's specifically hurt more because it was her, and I never thought that she'd ever treat me like that after so warmly welcoming me into her family. Once I let it all out and told her about what exactly hurt me, she said she understands me and that it was never her intention to hurt me. Her friends are important to her just as much as her son and daughter-in-law. She thought they'll start judging me if they find out about where I come from and that it'll hurt me far more than anything. In her own way, she was trying to protect me. Now I understand her point completely, and I'm not mad at her anymore, but I also told her that in future, it'll be helpful if she doesn't shun me and let me be a part of her life publicly too. I can handle all the criticism people will throw at me, but what I can't handle is my own family treating me differently. So finally, we cleared things between us, and I'm so glad that we talked. I knew that the genuine warmth I felt from her wasn't pretentious. We spent the rest of the holidays in quite a cheerful mood. All in all, things between us are back to normal. I thought you all who are following my story for a while should know about this small but very significant thing that happened. My mother-in-law asked me to come down at her place for the weekend as she was celebrating her retirement from work. I thought it was just going to be me and my husband, but I was so wrong. That evening, she told us to get dressed because she's invited a few of her friends over who will join her in celebration. Not going to lie, I was a little worried because even though we talked a lot and things were better between us, this was the first time I'll be meeting her friends after the incident. I made sure to dress properly and look the part. Once most of the guests had arrived, she introduced me to them as her daughter-in-law. Yes, she said that. She said, I'm her daughter-in-law, but with how we are, I might as well be her own daughter. That made me so proud. Although a few of her friends were talking about me behind my back, it didn't really matter because I was just happy that my mother-in-law understood my feelings and acted accordingly. After everyone left and we were alone, I properly thanked her for doing this for me. I knew it wasn't easy for her to leave her year-long beliefs behind and watch her friends talk about her family like they were discussing a sick child. She told me that I'm the one who changed her view when I first met her. She said her friends are important to her and she accepts them with all their faults, but I'm important for her too and that it was her choice to mix her two worlds since she's old enough to not worry about trivial things and to just enjoy her life. I didn't think I could respect and love her more than I already did, but suffice it to say that I was wrong. I wish that there are more mother-in-laws like her in the world. N-A-H. The title made this sound awful at first, but I'm so glad this turned out to be so wholesome. N-A-H. I'm so glad you decided to talk to her straight about why you're hurt. This goes on to prove that communication really does go a long way when it comes to relationships. So I, 34 male, have a 13-year-old daughter, Marissa, with my ex-wife, Kate, 35. Me and Kate started dating senior year or high school, married at 21 and had Marissa that same year. 
Me and Kate divorced when Marissa was seven. Nothing nefarious happened. We just were always at each other's throats. I felt like she didn't enjoy being intimate anymore. I felt like she was cold and she was always on my ass about things, constantly demanding me to do things. The divorce went smoothly. No alimony or child support because at the time, Kate was making double what I was as a nurse. We split the large expenses for Marissa right down the middle. It was tough for me at first because I didn't make that much. And Kate never gave me a break, always making me pay half. We have a tradition with Marissa. We usually take a summer trip and a winter trip with her, alternating which parent takes her on each trip. We total up the cost of the trip and split it in half. I've done well for myself the last few years and now it's not even a worry like it was when Marissa was young. Kate remarried a dude with three kids who owned a restaurant. COVID shut down the restaurant. For the last year and a half, I've been dating Jessica, 28, who is a former friend of Kate's. They have some beef for whatever reason. I stay out of it. So last year, Kate comes to me and says that she can't afford the trips this year. I didn't want to give her a break, but I remembered it was for Marissa, so I paid and took her on both. My daughter knows both of us pay for these trips typically. Kate comes to me again this year and says that she can't afford the trip. She said her family needs all her salary because her husband didn't find a job yet. I told her that really isn't my problem. She tells our daughter that mom and dad can't do the trip this year. Marissa was devastated and I was pissed. I told my daughter the trip was still on. My girlfriend learned about the situation from me. She said I've taken her on so many trips already and wants to form a closer bond with Marissa. So she would like to go on the trip and pay for half of it. I told Kate that Jessica was paying her half so that she could thank her. Kate blows up, telling me that Jessica wasn't allowed on the trip or she wouldn't let Marissa go. I reminded her we have a custody agreement so that wouldn't be happening and I fully intend to let Marissa know that Jessica is helping make this happen. As I think it's right to give Jessica credit and Marissa needs to know that. Kate is calling me an A.H saying I'm purposely trying to make her look bad. I said that she has made her financial decisions and those aren't my issue and I shouldn't cover for her anymore. Our daughter deserves to know which parent is making things happen and Jessica deserves that credit as it might help them form a closer bond. AITA? NTA. Assuming you share the truth in a non-judgmental, level-handed manner, your daughter is old enough to handle the truth. Be clear your mother's financial circumstances don't currently afford her a luxury-like trip. That's okay. These things happen in life and how much you can afford is not a measurement of love. However, Jessica feels that these trips are important enough that she's going to help with the expense so that the trip can happen. That tells the truth without making Kate look bad. NTA. At 13, your daughter is old enough to understand that your ex-wife may not be able to afford everything she wants and that it doesn't mean your ex loves her any less. Simply be honest with your daughter. I, 23 female, am married to my husband, 25, for five months now, and I've been wearing my wedding rings daily and rarely ever take them off. However, my husband is a different story. He tends to take his off for work. It's a very manual and in the sun type of work, so I don't mind when he takes it off. He also takes it off when showering, sleeping, or tends to forget to put it on, so when we end up going out for the weekend, he almost never has it on whilst I have mine on. It's been brought up among his friends that because of his forgetfulness to wear his ring, that it's as if he's single again, in a joking manner. I've asked him if maybe his ring doesn't fit or needs adjustment and he's declined, saying it fits just fine. I even asked him if he doesn't like wearing it, which he denies and says he does. However, it still kind of bothers me when I'm around him that he almost never has it on. Because I decided yesterday during 4th of July to not wear mine, even though we were meeting up with family for a barbecue, he didn't notice until his brother mentioned where our wedding rings were. I stated that I just decided not to wear mine today, just to make an excuse to cover the real reason why I didn't wear them. My husband, after the barbecue, asked me why I really didn't have them on, since he knows I love my wedding rings and never take them off. I flat out told him that if he refuses to wear his ring, then why should I wear mine? He got really upset about it and has now refused to talk to me, and I can't help but think, I took it too far by not wearing them and telling him that I didn't want to wear them if he doesn't either. So am I the a-hole here? NTA. You were teaching him a well-deserved lesson. He got a taste of his medicine and he didn't like how that big gulp of disrespect tasted going down. That icky sinking feeling he had when someone brought up your absent wedding ring. Yeah, that's how he's been making you feel for a long time.
Wearing that ring should be a priority. He should now see that. YTA, you are making an issue out of nothing. You enjoy the wedding ring and habitually wear it. He does not and has very good reason not to wear any rings habitually because of his work. Do you think your husband isn't committed to you and the marriage? If yes, you have a problem that him wearing a ring will not fix. If no, tell your friends to go kick rocks if they're not letting the joke go.